Okay, on to part two. So, one final important thing about Parmenides that we need to discuss is his reliance on reason over experience. So for all of the uh, initial three philosophers, who are sometimes called the inquirers into nature, or the Milesian naturalists, uh, so if either of those names pop up, you know it's referring to Thales and Aximander and Anaximenes. Uh, all three of those philosophers relied on a lot of experience to inform their views, right? So Thales was actually looking to uh, experience to see, oh, well, water's here, water's there, it's the necessary thing for life, I'm watching it transform. He was relying on evidence to inform his view. Uh, the same for Anaximander and Anaximenes. They were both looking to nature uh, and using their experience to inform the theory that they crafted. Parmenides is a big shift in thinking here because he thinks we should be relying on reason over experience. He thinks that experience can lead us astray. Experience is full of illusions. And so that's why he thinks change is actually an illusion, right? So if you're relying on experience, then clearly you're going to think change is real. We see change all the time. I mean, as I'm talking, as you're watching the video tick away on this video, uh, watching the time tick away on this video, you're seeing change, right? You're seeing change literally at every second. Every time you uh, move, think, blink, everything, you're experiencing change. Uh, so if you're relying completely on experience, then you're going to think Parmenides must be crazy. Clearly there's change in the world. Why should I listen to his view? But Parmenides thinks that reason is more important than evidence, experience, uh, experiential evidence. Reason can show us things uh, that we can't figure out just by looking at the world. And he thinks that his view about change being illusory, change being fake, uh, is informed by reason. And so who cares that it flies in the face of our common sense experience? If reason and logic tells us it's true, that's the most important thing. Uh, so like I said, we'll look at his argument here soon. But that's the, the rough idea for why he thinks there's no change and why reason is more important. Okay, so after Parmenides came the Atomists, uh, Democritus, and Leucippus. And they're sort of a middle ground between the Milesian naturalists and Parmenides. Right? So the Atomists agreed with Parmenides that there was no real change. Change is definitely an illusion. But they thought it was still important for us to explain why we experience change. So Parmenides was like, okay, uh, I have this argument. It shows there's no change. I don't care about your common sense experience. Let's move on. The atomists think, well, we agree that there's no real change, but we certainly experience change. So any good theory should be able to tell us why there's no real change, but also why we don't... Uh, why we experience that change if there is no real change in the world. Right? So they think that explanation rounds out the theory and makes it more valuable. So the atomists believe something that's uh, maybe, maybe to you guys, uh, shocking uh, in how close it is to some of our modern theories, our contemporary theories. Uh, they believe that there were just two things that existed in reality. There were the atoms and there were void. There was void, sorry. There were the atoms and there was void. And the atoms, uh, there are an infinite number of them. They're absolutely indestructible. Uh, things can move in any direction, right? So these atoms are just moving around in the void, these infinite indestructible atoms just floating around in the void. And the reason why the atomists believe that there's no real change is because these atoms can never change, right? They're indestructible. Uh, they don't actually change at all. They stay in their same format and just move around in the void. So there's no real change. I mean, there's movement, so there's some change, but there's no real change. The atoms don't actually transform into water or fire or people, right? So it's not like there are atoms and then they all start to clump together and then they form a person or they form a mountain. Those things are illusions. There are no sort of mountains or people. There are just the atoms and the void. 
And so why do we then experience change? And the atomists here, uh, this might sound a little strange to you, right? But the atomists thought it's just the way that the atoms are being perceived, right? So as the atoms move and move around in the void, they come closer together or farther apart. And in doing so, they start to represent objects, give us this illusion of objects. Uh, it's almost as if once these atoms all get close enough, they start to project an image out. So anything we actually are seeing is just one of these projections, one of these illusions. Really, in reality, there are just atoms in void. Uh, but at least this allows the atomists to not just say, okay, screw common sense experience. It allows them to say, okay, we don't actually have change, but here's why we experience it. Uh, and so... Once again, the atomists here are siding with Parmenides on the reason versus experience debate. Right? Reason is still more important. If our arguments lead us to a conclusion that we believe, that we have good reason to believe, then it doesn't matter what our common sense experience says. Reason is king, according to Parmenides and the atomists. And you'll see that back and forth throughout the history of philosophy between those who think experience uh, should be the main thing that informs our theories and those who think no experience can actually lead us astray We need reason and logic to get us there Okay, so that's the end of this sort of uh, beginning <laughs> Of philosophy. It's uh, the end of the beginning. Uh, we've talked through the pre-Socratic philosophers uh, Now we're going to switch over quickly and talk about Parmenides argument as to why there's no real change. So let's go do that now